In this lecture, we will study how to apply abstract factory pattern. So basically, what we want to do is to separate algorithm and data. So in the first step, you need to know the algorithm. Well, you can, uh, given an algorithm, you want to analyze the way that your algorithm interacts with data. And you want to find out the operations that the data class need to provide so that your algorithm can, your algorithm can work without knowing the data types. And then the second step, you will, you will design the data class hierarchy. So you need to have one abstract data class, and then you may have multiple concrete data classes, one for each uh, different data type. And the so third step, you need to want to design the algorithm class. So in this lecture, we are going to use two concrete algorithm, algorithms. One is for sorting, bubble sort, and another is searching, so binary search, to explain how to apply abstract factory pattern to design uh, algorithms. Let's take a look at bubble sort algorithm. You can find many pseudocode or C++ code uh, uh, on the web for bubble sort. This is the algorithm that I copied from the Wikipedia. So again, as we said, given this algorithm, you want to analyze how does this algorithm operate, interact with data. And then you want to find out all the operations that uh, the data need to provide so that your algorithm can work with uh, this, uh, the data. Let's take a look. So, okay. So, you have a list of sortable items and uh, then is uh, you get the length you basically you need to know how many items there and then uh, there's there's boolean variable swap is equal to false and then you i from one to n minus one and then in this algorithm you say uh, if a the i minus one element is bigger than ai then you swap the and swap equal to two and here n is reduced by one. So this is the algorithm. You basically take a look at this algorithm and you mark all the places that this algorithm interacts with data. Well, the first one is this one, get the number of atoms. And second is this one, you, you want to compare the i minus one element and the f element. You want to know which one is bigger. And third is you want to swap them. So you can see that you basically, the data need to provide three operations so that this algorithm will be able to uh, sort the, the data. One is get the size, basically get how many atoms there, how many data there. Second is you need to compare with the at elements and the jist elements, so nj. And third is swap nj. That's it. So if you have these three elements, then you can uh, any data. So for any data type, if the data class can provide these three operations, then this algorithm will be able to work with uh, this data type. And here the tricky part is we compare uh, in the algorithm, given this algorithm, you will see that we first get the i minus, I minus one element. We first get this element. Second is we get this ith element. And third is we compare which one is bigger, right? So this is our abstraction. These three operations are our abstraction of the operations that the data need to provide. Another way to do that is if what if you Instead of you have this operation of comparing the at elements and the jth elements, instead of doing this, what if you say I want to get at at elements? I have a function say get at elements. And then, what if you do that? If you do that, then this basically in uh, here in this statement, you basically need to get the i minus one element, and get the at element, and you need to compare which one is the bigger. Well, that's a bad idea because your algorithm may not know how to compare two elements. Here, if two, two elements are integers or doubles or flows, then that's easy. But what if they are student records, for example? 
what if uh, you want to sort student records based on based on their say first name you can write this is just simply bigger one number bigger than, than another one because when we compare for example compare with their last names or first names this will be a string right so the algorithm we do not want the algorithm to know the data types so the algorithm doesn't know the data types right we don't want the algorithm to know the data types because once the algorithm knows the data types then your algorithm is tied to that data type so instead of uh, using get elements i we don't do that we basically have provide the interface say smaller i and j which one is smaller it basically returns that if uh, if the add element is less than the gist element then we return uh, say yes or false and so on well this is the bubble sort algorithm that can work with the abstract data so here the abstract data is we call it sortable vector right and then this algorithm works we first get the size and then we the rest algorithm is the same which basically here is if it is smaller uh, i minus one to element and j to element then we swap them so you can see that when you write this algorithm you do not know what's the type of the data you don't care right you only you only need to make sure that this one need to provide these two interfaces right the data that this your algorithm can work with must provide these two interfaces and must inherit from this sortable vector so that you can give a pointer of the uh, the direct class and here then this is the data uh, data class hierarchy so you have a abstract class define these three interfaces and again for this interface you want to define them as pure virtual functions so this is the abstract class and then you may have you have this uh, integer vector public inherit from this sort of a vector and uh, implement these interfaces implement this interface get size smaller and swap now what a, so how to sort data based on you know, different attributes support uh, suppose so you have student records that can be sorted based on their first name last name birth year weight for example gpa and so on so and uh, we know that the data need to provide these three functions so uh, get size smaller and swap now the problem is different attributes have different uh, implementation of this smaller right so i element less than the gist element right so if this uh, gpa is one way to i mean is one implementation and if the, what if the last name of the first name that's the different implementation so the solution to solve this problem is you use different classes to implement different smaller functions for example so here you you may have uh, you have this sortable vector uh, which is abstract class you have uh, get size swap and smaller you can see these are pure virtual functions so they are italic and this is abstract class so it's italic and then you have this bubble sort uh, algorithm uh, class in this class actually you have two algorithms one is sort in uh, in the decreasing order and another is sort in the increasing order and here you have uh, another class inherited from this uh, you have student vector and also this sortable vector so you you implement this smaller swap and uh, get size so you based on I mean, this uh, smaller you will how to implement smaller is based on how to, basically uh, you call their first names and uh, to implement this smaller and you have another class say students vector sort by GPA and then you implement this uh, smaller by comparing their GPA right here you have another class say, integer vector you have a guess size swap and so on here we notice that uh, for this student vector sort by first name so they and this student vector sort by GPA their uh, implementation of guess size is the same and their implementations of uh, swap are the same so we can these two classes can share these two uh, uh, operation implementations 
so we do not need to implement them twice in this which means that we can have another uh, class so we put this these two implementation in this class so this student vector sort for will inherit from pub, public inherit from student vector and sort for vector and uh, implement this guy size and swap and uh, and then this student vector sort by first name will inherit from uh, inherit from this and here this class is only for the purpose of uh, uh, putting these two functions together and uh, we cannot instantiate a student vector sort so we can make it uh, uh, abstract class so we can use make the uh, uh, the constructor to be uh, protected now let's take a look at the binary search algorithm so you can find binary search code from many places on the internet and this is so I uh, I co basically copy from this uh, uh, website and this is a uh, binary search implementation first uh, you have left and right and uh, uh, you you first compare it in the middle uh, here for binary search we assume the array is sorted already the array is sorted already and you calculate the middle and then you compare the query you compare the query with uh, the, uh, the element in the middle and if they are equal then you are done right and if uh, uh, the the element in the middle is bigger than the uh, the query then you basically search from left to uh, middle minus one you assign middle minus one to the right and then uh, and then here is uh, uh, otherwise you search from middle plus one to right so you basically uh, assign middle plus one to uh, left so here we need to analyze the operations that the algorithm need to operate with uh, the data class well first you need to uh, get size basically here you need the right right so you need to uh, initially this left equal to one and the right equal to the size of the uh, array right so and second is you need to compare at uh, at at element so now for this uh, binary search algorithm uh, in, when we apply the abstract factory pattern to this binary search algorithm the key challenge is how to represent the query how to represent this query that uh, in your search algorithm without knowing the type of this query right so because you in this algorithm in the implementation of the algorithm you do not want to know the data type you don't know the data type right and here but uh, for this query you uh, you want to compare the query with the the uh, the middle element right the, the element in the middle of the array and then obviously then you have to know uh, this query type right the type of the query so how to deal with this well the solution is we can let the concrete data class to store the query store this uh, the, the element you want to query and then you uh, also you want to send the query there so basically you you let the uh, the data class to handle this so you basically compare at the at element and uh, so for your abstract uh, for the, the algorithm for your algorithm you only need to specify i want to compare the query with uh, this element this uh, the one in the middle uh, you specify a value in the algorithm and then it will returns three cases one is equal another is bigger than and then another case is less than and then your algorithm will, will work based on these three cases so in this way you let the concrete data class to handle uh, the store of the for storing the query and setting the query for reading assignment you need to read the, the abstract factory pattern um, in the textbook now let's take a look of uh, the example code so here we have bubble sort and we have uh, two algorithms sort increasing order and sort in the increasing order and uh, both works with the abstract data type which has sort of a vector and sort of vector provides three interfaces get size smaller and swap and uh, here is the sortable vector data class uh, is the abstract class and has uh, three pure virtual functions get size smaller and swap 
and uh, this is a concrete data type called integer vectors and uh, it uh, implements this gas size smaller and swaps and this is a main function main function we first instantiate the uh, uh, we basically instantiate the algorithm object and also the class the data object and then we can hook them up uh, so uh, here we hook up this uh, bubble sort algorithm where this um, the this integer data class and uh, here's a pointer uh, get the address and um, uh, here we call the sort inc uh, decreasing and also here this example here we sort in increasing order and uh, we can take a look let's see t1 so you can see before the sorting is 5, 4, 6, 10, and after sorting in decreasing, we have 10, 6, 5, 4, and after sorting increasing will be 4, 5, 6, 10. 